Today we're going meat free, but it's really going to pack a punch. Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life, where a great barbecue doesn't cost a fortune. My name's Tom, and today we're doing that meat free kebab. So we're cooking mushroom shawarma on the mice spike, cooking it on the Aldi Kamado. So I'm going to jump straight in with this cook and show you what we need to do. So as we've done with some of our meat kebabs earlier on in this series, we want to grate some onion across a bowl with a tea towel in there because we only want the juice, we don't want the fibrous content. So it's nice and easy to do, just get a grater over the top of that bowl, grate away, and then once you've got half an onion grated in there, we're just going to squeeze that tea towel and all of that oniony juice comes out, leaving the fibres behind, and it gives us a nice beautiful flavour in the bottom of the bowl. To this, we're going to add two cloves of garlic, then a handful of chopped coriander, a preserved lemon, so if you don't know what a preserved lemon is, these come in little jars, you can get them in your more high-end supermarket. So I picked this up in Waitrose. Um, I was expecting them to be quite expensive and there was only £2 for the jar. Um, so I was quite pleasantly surprised by how cheap they were, but they are such a pungent flavour. You don't get the real tartness from what you would normally get with a lemon. It's much sweeter where it's been preserved in like a sugar and um, water solution. So if you can get hold of them instead of using a standard lemon, it really does make a difference to the cook. Next, we're going in with a tablespoon of tomato puree or tomato paste, whatever you want to call it. Then we're going in with one and a half teaspoons of shawarma seasoning. So I've been lucky that my spike sent me over um, some of the seasonings after I did the first um, video using the my spike where I did the doner kebab. Um, they were happy with that, so they sent me over some seasonings to try. Um, I was doing the mushroom shawarma anyway, so it just ties in really well that I've used the shawarma seasoning on top of that. It's a really beautiful flavour, got a nice smell when you open that bag. So uh, yeah, head over there and pick some up, and you can pick the my spike up while you're over there. Um, I've got lots planned for this my spike, I'm really impressed with it. There's, there's lots going to be going on with that over the next sort of 12 months or so. So into all of that we now want to add uh, some oil so just a good glug of oil in there and then start to mix it around and you want a nice thick paste um, and then to save on the oil but to make the paste go a bit further I added a splash of water I didn't want to keep adding oil and making this an incredibly fatty cook so I've added a bit more bit of water in there just to help loosen it up and this is going to help us cover all of these mushrooms um, in our nice shawarma paste so for the mushrooms, I again, I was in Waitrose, um, I've looked in all of the supermarkets to try and find the best range of mushrooms, and Waitrose do a nice mixed box of woodland mushrooms. In there you get oyster mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, and king oyster mushrooms. So these are going to give a nice depth of different flavour and texture into this kebab. And then the main mushroom is going to be some uh, flat portobello mushrooms, so these are a nice size and we're going to layer the other mushrooms in between. So next up we need to prep our mushrooms. So with the large portobello mushrooms, they've got quite a thick skin on the top of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel that skin off and this, this is going to make the like dome top of the mushroom much more porous to these swarma flavourings. And we're not going to waste that um, skin that we've peeled off the top because we can chop that up and we're going to add that into our paste so that we're just bumping up the mushroom flavour in there as long as uh, along with the shawarma flavour. And as I say, it's keeping that mushroom much more porous so that we can get many more flavours in there. So with the mushrooms, we now want to get them into a Ziploc bag. So just get them all in there all together and get that paste mixed around. So I decided that I was just going to get the mushrooms and I was going to mix them through the bowl of paste first and then sort of fish them out and put them into a bag because there's not unless you've got a very large ziploc bag there's not a massive amount of room and um, these mushrooms are quite large so just sort of mix them through in the bowl got them into the bag and then we're going into the fridge for about three hours so this is going to let all these flavors infuse into the mushrooms as i said before mushrooms are quite a porous a vegetable so everything's going to get sucked in and really spread this flavor all the way through them so about two and a half hours in then, we need to get our Kamado lit. So we're using the Aldi Kamado today, as I said at the beginning, and we're just going to light it in our usual way. So we've got Texas Club charcoal in the bottom um, from Kamado Kings, and then we're going in with a couple of fire lighters into that, 
get them lit, leave the lid open, bottom vent fully open while them fire lighters are burning away. This is going to light the charcoal, get things going. Once they've gone out, we shut the lid down, keep that bottom vent fully open and we open the top vent on the hinge all the way round. So this lets that maximum airflow through there and lets the charcoal really take. And this, at this point we are warming our ceramic. So keep, your, keep putting your hand on the side of the ceramic. When you can feel it starting to warm up, this is when you want to be closing your vents down to the desired temperature settings that you want. So we were aiming for about 200 degrees on this cook today, nice and hot. That's two fingers in the bottom vent for me and the top vent is three quarters to being fully open, not on the hinge, on the daisy wheel itself. So that works for this charcoal in these weather conditions today. So you may need to dial that in, you may want your bottom vent slightly more open, you may want it slightly more closed. But you're gonna get used to that as you're cooking if you stick to the same charcoal. If you keep changing your charcoals between cooks, then you're gonna find it very hard to dial in temperatures. Um, between the bags you're just going to sort of get used to it and then you're going to change it again so try and stick to one charcoal brand to say i use texas club now really impressed with it from kamado kings um and it's it helps me nail in them temperatures really well so we've got that temperature nailed in at 200 degrees we need to get these mushrooms onto the mice bike so i'll show you the mice bike again if you missed it from the first video so it quite simply is a disc on the bottom so there's my spike on it and then it's got a 25 centimeter spike on the top it's quite thick so i was a little worried that it might split the mushrooms but you can see as i'm putting them on it doesn't split them at all so i just went on with a large portobello one on the bottom and then a few of these woodland ones sort of on top of that then another large portobello one over that and that kind of goes over the top of them and shields them from that big heap because they're smaller and then keep stacking that up right the way to the top. And as I say, it, there's a fair bit of mushroom in here. It's completely full, full of flavour. And I'm massively impressed with how this turned out at the end. If you've made it this far into the video, then you must be quite interested in what we're doing. So if you're not a subscriber, then please do hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like the video. Leave me a comment underneath and let me know what you think of the video. We've got lots planned for this year. It's going to be a massive year for barbecue life so make sure you stick around and follow me on that journey so we've got all the mushrooms on that spike we need to get it onto the aldi kamado now so what i did forget to say was that we're doing this as an indirect cook and when i like to warm that ceramic deflector up um, as we're bringing the barbecue up to temperature so i put that in the moment that we um, shut the lid down i put that deflector in either on the grill grates or on the little triangle grill grate holder and that just brings that up to temperature slowly um, you can drop it into position if you really wanted to um, there's no real rhyme or reason but you want to get it in there nice and early um, and let that come up to temperature slowly like we're warming the rest of the ceramic if you get your barbecue really hot and you pop that in then you stand much more chance of cracking it so make sure you pre-warm that deflector for an indirect cook so as i say we're set up for indirect we've got that deflector in and we're just going to take that mice white we're going to put it in the old paella pan that you can see behind me links for that are in the description below onto amazon you want a 30 centimeter one and i use it for all sorts of things on this channel it could be a drip pan um it's kind of as we're using it today i've cooked curries in it there's loads of different ways that you can use that so make sure you pick one up it's a great um, piece of equipment to add to your arsenal for the Aldi Kamado so we've got that on the paella pan we're going to get that into the barbecue shut the lid down and we're going to leave it for about 15 minutes so after that 15 minutes you can see that the mushrooms are starting to sweat you've got a nice little puddle of oil into the bottom of the tray and we just want to get a pair of tongs and we're just going to put them on top of that top mushroom and we're going to push them down a little bit and as you can see you get a lot of oil and mushroom um, juice come out and we want this because by pushing all of the moisture out of these mushrooms it gives it a much more of a meaty taste and a stronger mushroom taste in the end so sort of every 10 to 15 minutes we just want to be pushing down on the top and as you can see from the very beginning we started off with these mushrooms at the top of the spike and we're just working them down every sort of uh, let's say 10 to 15 minutes up to around the 45 minute mark at which point 
take um, a skewer or a, a instant read from one and we're just checking to see how done these mushrooms are we want a, a nice soft mushroom we don't want too much bite left in them so we're going to get these off of the barbecue um, you can leave these just like this if you wanted to or I decided I was cooking these in some wraps with some red pepper and halloumi so as I'm cooking I've added them in as we go in your red peppers are going to take sort of 15 minutes so if you want to leave the mushrooms off to one side and let them rest wrap them in a bit of tinfoil to keep them warm while you're cooking the other bits you can do or you can add them it's kind of while we're cooking which is what I did I just put the the peppers around the outside started to warm them up and then once i've taken the mushrooms off move them into the middle over that really high direct heat slice some halloumi got some oil on that so it doesn't stick i've got that over the direct areas as well got a nice piece of color on that um, and then we're ready to put it into a wrap so then the last thing that i want to add to this wrap that we're going to make is some uh, harissa yogurt sort of dressing so i picked up some rose harissa paste I've seen this in all of the supermarkets. The one I got was from Waitrose because that's where I picked up the mushrooms. Well, I've seen it in Asda's, Morrison's, Marks and Spencer's. The only place I've not looked is Sainsbury's, but I'm sure they have some sort of harissa paste in there as well. It's just going equal parts with that, with harissa and a low fat yogurt. Mix that through and it gives you a nice, beautiful um, hit of flavor without it being too overpowering and too hot with that yogurt just sort of balancing everything out so i've got a couple of flatbreads i've bought these flatbreads this week instead of using the flatbread recipe that um is in this series so it gives you a nice little option you can buy them or you can make them and um, we're just going to get these built so we've got that mushroom you want to take a nice nice sharp knife again with them tongs kind of push down on the top and you can slice straight through as you would like a doner kebab we just want nice chunks of mushroom you can see them falling off give it a little turn keep working around the outside and working your way into the middle and we're going to get this built onto our flatbreads so we've just got our flatbread go on with some hummus again i picked this up in waitrose and this is smoked hummus and it is like nothing i've ever eaten before i don't think i'll ever go back to normal hummus now that i know that smoked hummus exists if you did know that smoked hummus already exists let me know where you're getting it from because if I can get it somewhere cheaper than Waitrose then that would be great um, but we've got a nice layer of that in the bottom then we're going in with our mushrooms on with our peppers and halloumi and then a nice bit of that dressing on the top we've got no taste test today because when I cooked this the neighbours were out in the garden soaring and hammering and the music was blaring so you couldn't hear um, what I was talking about so unfortunately we don't have a taste test but I am telling you now I thought this was going to be good, but it completely blew my expectations out of the water. It was so good, and I cannot wait to make it again. That shawarma seasoning from my spike is unbelievable. All the rest of the flavours we've teamed it with just makes a really wonderful experience. And I'm over the moon with how this turned out. So if you like what we're doing here at Barbecue Life, then please do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like that video. That's really important. And leave me a comment, which is equally important. If youtube can see that you're interacting with the video then they help push it out to other people and that helps grow the channel even further thank you very much for watching cheers